Join me in the prayer of illumination. Open our ears, God of the nations. Open our hearts. Give to us understanding of your word and the wisdom to apply it in our lives on a daily basis. In the name of Jesus Christ, the maker of peace, amen. Well, there's a long scripture reading here today, uh, and uh, uh, it's eyes from Isaiah 55, verses 1 through 13. Hear everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and you who have no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread and your earnings? For that which does not satisfy. Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen so that you may live. I will make with you uh, an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love of David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander of the peoples. Now you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that you do not know, you shall run to run to you, because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Uh, call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their way and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them return to the Lord, that he may have mercy on them and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon for my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For us the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts your thoughts. For as the rain and the snow come down in, from heaven and do not return there until uh, they have watered the earth. Uh, let me get the rest of that. Thank you. Let's see. I'm sorry, folks. Making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that which goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to be empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out in joy and be led back in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall burst into song, and all the trees in the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress. Instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle. And it shall be the Lord for, uh, for a memorial, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. So every October on this first Sunday, we celebrate what we call World Communion Sunday. And it celebrates, as I shared with the children, our connection with Christians all over the world, not just Presbyterians, who share in this meal. Now, this day reminds us that we're much more than one congregation. For those sharing communion around the world today, the surroundings might be different. Everyone's not sitting in a wooden pew. The bread is going to look different. It depends on what part of the world you are in. The language is going to be different, but it's the same table. It's Christ's table. It's the one where the Messiah sits and welcomes us all. Our connection to Presbyterians across the country and our global partners were highlighted this morning by Audrey and James. We are much more than one congregation. Our music today, perhaps you will notice, comes from different traditions. Each tradition is nourishing to someone in God's big family. We are much more than one congregation. The bread on the table is in the different shapes and different textures and flavors. We're representing breads from around the world because we are much more than one congregation. 
On this special Sunday, you heard James refer to it, we are also accustomed to joining other Presbyterians across the country in this peace and global witness offering. And you've seen in your pews, if you don't see one and want one, there are some extras out in the library. A special envelope because it's a chance for us to share in peacemaking work. Funds go to use things like bringing together Christian, Muslim, and Jewish children in Palestine to get to know one another. Or they get used to support the Presbyterian Peacemaker Program, which brings leaders from war-torn areas of the world to the United States to travel around and visit and share in our congregations. I don't know, maybe you remember that a few years back, a man came from Cameroon by the name of Jaff Bamenga. Jaff Bamenga came here. He stayed in the home of the Benga family, and he visited with us in several different venues. I remember speaking with him downstairs in the fellowship hall. As a result of his visit here to Hunting Ridge, our session made a decision to use our annual global mission dollars to send to his work in northern Cameroon where there is a hunger fighting network that he's in charge of. Every congregation earmarks 25% of this special offering. Our session has chosen that 25 cents of every dollar that you put in here goes to Guns to Gardens, which is supporting a gun buyback program in cities across the country. And I know she's not here today, but if you get a chance to talk with Janine Mickle about her experience at, those, at one of those events just a couple weeks ago in downtown Baltimore at First and Franklin Presbyterian. This is a special day, World Communion Sunday. And on this special day, we have heard a word from the voice of the prophet Isaiah. Old Testament prophets like Isaiah address their current situation always with a future hope. The words we heard this morning are written to a beleaguered people who are exhausted from living in exile. They've been living in Babylon far away from their home. This chapter 55, um, Dick read the entire chapter of chapter 55. It closes out the part of Isaiah that we call Deutero-Isaiah, which is written later than the first 39 chapters of that prophet. It began back with chapter 40, comforting the people, telling them that their time of oppression, their time of exile is now ending, and they're going to return home. They're going to start their lives afresh. He contrasts in that beginning part of this whole um, piece from 40 to 55. He contrasts the temporal nature of grass and flowers with the permanence of God's word. That was his opening. And now what we read today was kind of like the epilogue at the end, wrapping everything up. The echoes are here from that opening part. God's word comes to bring life and growth like the rain comes to water the earth. God's word comes to accomplish what God intends, which is salvation for his people. Through the prophet, the message is this. You will go home. You will become a testimony for other nations who are going to observe and watch the way God is active in your lives. And they, these other nations, foreigners who were not Hebrew at all, are going to be drawn to worship, to praise, to see God as worthy of their commitments, basically because of God's work in you, Israel. You will be evangelists. This chapter starts out with a string of imperatives, commands or directions for the exiles. Come to the water. Come buy food and eat. Come buy wine and milk. Not only the basics, 
but the luxuries, the wine and the milk, are also going to be provided at no cost. God's priceless gift of release and return will be like coming to the market with empty pockets and going home with full arms, full of food and drink. Then the, the imperative is listen. Listen carefully. Listen and come to me. Listen and you will live. You see, God's word is to be listened to, not ignored. And then the word look. God has been loyal to you ever since the time of King David, that hero king who became the standard to which all the subsequent kings were measured. Look, you're going to be a witness to others because of the Lord your God. Seek the Lord. Call him when he is near. Come, listen, look, seek. Something new is happening, says the prophet. These writings of Deutero Isaiah end with these words. You will go out with celebration and you will be led back, meaning back to your homeland, in peace. Even the mountains and the hills will burst into song before you. All the trees of the field will clap their hands. We have that song. All the trees of the field will clap their hands. It's a beautiful picture of the universal joy and celebration encompassing all of creation because the people of Judah are going home. We know from other historical sources that the return to Jerusalem was not one big celebratory parade, as this makes it sound like, but it was more like kind of like a trickling home of groups of children, parents and grandchildren over a period of time for them to leave from Babylon and get back to Jerusalem. They were returning to a homeland that had been destroyed by invaders, that had been abandoned for decades, a place where they're going to have to start over afresh. But Isaiah captures the feelings, the feelings of joy at coming home, the returning in peace and not fear, returning with hope to rebuild their city, to rebuild their temple, to rebuild their lives in their homeland. And I invite you to think about the people in Puerto Rico and Bermuda and Cuba and Florida and South Carolina, those who have had their homes destroyed or greatly damaged, those whose streets are littered with debris and some of them still remaining in darkness. How are they going to feel when they return home? Some of them are starting to do that already. The wind and the rain have disappeared in place of those torrents and gusts of wind. There's peace and sunshine now. For now, the fear has passed, but the grief is real. There is no beautiful picture of celebration for them to come home to. The work ahead of them is overwhelming. Everyone is going to need help and support emotionally, physically, and financially as they return home. It's now time for others to step in alongside them. James mentioned that the Presbyterian disaster assistance is already on the ground in Florida and Puerto Rico. It's time to support that work of the Presbyterian Disaster Assistance or some other helping agency that's committed to providing relief to people who have experienced a natural disaster. It's time to be more than one congregation. 
So this morning, I'm going to invite you to this table. I'm going to invite you to come to the table, to listen to the words of hope for a future, to seek the guidance of God for what you can do and how you can pray and who you can support in this time. Come, listen, look, and seek. Amen.